Right, we're at the Royal Quays here, and uh, we're at the lock, and we've got the river in the background, and behind me here we've got this uh, accumulator tower. This was built by William Armstrong, William Armstrong. William Armstrong was one of the finest engineers of his day. He was one of the richest men in the world as well, and he was, he was like a genius, uh, Armstrong, Lord Armstrong, and he was pioneered a lot of pneumatic technology, hydraulic technology, and this water, this, the machinery enclosed inside that beautiful, almost gothic, slightly gothic tower, um, was just uh, fantastic machinery for the day. It was able to open and close these lock gates so that ships could come in and out. Now, we've got to imagine what the Tyne was like back in those days. In 1850, before 1850, the River Tyne was, um, it was just a natural river. It was very shallow and it had about 800 acres of uh, sand shoals and mud banks. And so it was a very difficult place for shipping. Uh, it was a pre-industrial river back then, before 1850. And, um, you know, th that means the, the, the shipping in the, upper part, in the upper reaches of the river towards Newcastle it all consisted pretty much of small keel boats and foil boats and things like that. And they would transport cargo and coal down to the lower reach of the river here, where these could be loaded onto bigger, larger boats. And that was a very inefficient process. So what happened in around 1850, was um, the Tyne Improvement Commission was formed by a guy, the leading man of this was really a guy called William Linskill, who lived in the Tynemouth Lodge, uh, which was a villa in Tynemouth. And um, now what the Tyne Improvement Commission consisted of was, it was a body of like about 32 men, uh, two of them were permanent uh, commissioners, and there was 15 representatives from Newcastle, Gateshead, South Shields, Jarrow, and Tynemouth. And Tynemouth at that time included North Shields. So these 15 representatives, and there was also 15 representatives from the coal and the shipbuilders and the industry people and the traders who, 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 who used the river. And the, the Tyne Improvement Commission, formed in 1850, it did three things. It was formed by an act of parliament, and the three things that it did was, firstly, it built the piers. It started work on the piers almost straight away. So the piers took about 40 years to build, um, and it was a very hard undertaking, especially the North Pier, which broke up once or twice and had to be rebuilt again in a straight line. So, so they built the piers as safety, bringing ships into the harbour, because, you know, the Black Middens and the Herd Sands were treacherous hazards at the mouth of the river, but there's also the, the open nature of the river before it was industrialised, before the commission, meant that these easterly gales and these nasty storms were, 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 were would really wreck a lot of shipping. A lot of money and a lot of lives were lost. So the piers were an absolute priority for the time of the commission. And the other thing that they did was they built docks. Okay, so they built stairs and docks. And this dock here, which was called Albert Edward Dock, which includes the whole holy um, and this Northumbrian key down here is massive, and it's uh, with this amazing lock technology built by Armstrong. You know, um, this was the, the main dock they built. Now, Armstrong had a great interest in making the Tyne Improvement Commission work. Why? Because his works were up at Elzig, okay, way beyond the Tyne Bridge, and that was full of mud banks and, and islands and sandbanks and so on. So he wanted the river widened, he wanted it deepened, and he wanted it straightened so he could get his ships up to Scotswood and Elzig, where his um, fabulous technology and is also very sinister technology because it's a lot of weapons. But that's why we have the swing bridge as well in the middle of the town. So the swing bridge was again Armstrong's hydraulic technology. And these, the, the, this and the swing bridge are the only two examples of it. They're the only two examples of Armstrong's war, um, hydraulic technology that still exist. Um, but yeah, so he had a lot, he had a lot to, uh, he, had a, a, he had vested interests, let's say, in making the Tyne Improvement Commission work. Um, they, they built docks, they built staves, and they dredged the river, and they built the piers. So they, that was a, a, a fantastic development because it made the Tyne River um, efficient. It made it helpful to industry, and it meant that from going from a pre-industrial river um, before before eighteen fifty, by the early twentieth century, there was millions of tons of cargo coming in and out of this river. So it really changed the face of uh, of the of the economy here. So that's uh, this is. This is Albert Edward Dock. Now, also, one other thing about Albert Edward Dock. This might not have been built if it was the, the original plan. If you look over at Knott's Flats there, it, Knott's Flats is massive. It's the biggest thing in the whole in the whole area. But um, just below Knott's Flats, the original plan was to build a Tynemouth Dock. Now, the Tynemouth Dock would have involved blowing up the Black Middens. 
and uh, is sinking a lot of money into making this new harbour just below Knott's Flats there. And eventually they didn't have the enormous uh, sums of money required. The thing dragged on for way too long. And the politics of the railways at the time, which were very sort of uh, bitter and, and ruthless politics, um, and a lot of skullduggery going on there, uh, they stopped that dock being built. In fact, it was stopped by an act of parliament as well, just as the Time Improvement Commission was founded by an act of parliament. So the, so the, uh, the plan then changed and they built this Albert Edward dock instead, which is a, a really excellent piece of... Uh, Excellent.